Hey, thank you so much, Mayor uh, Warren, for giving us a call. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing well, Chris. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Well, we like, you know, we, you, you guys are, uh, are running. It's sort of a the campaign hasn't getting the kind of attention they normally get, at least not so far. I suspect that'll heat up more uh, as the, uh, well, as it gets colder. But um, we're really glad that, you, you know, you're, you're so interested in New Bedford. And I think that New Bedford's a, a, a key uh, component for your campaign, wouldn't you say? I do, and it's a key uh, component, really, for the Commonwealth. It's an incredibly important city in our state, um, and I believe uh, that the people of New Bedford, uh, the industry there, um, can really add to the vitality of our Commonwealth if we make the right investments. And, uh, Chris, one thing I did want to mention, um, I know we have uh, two fishermen that are missing, uh, Michael and Jonathan, <clears throat> recently. I just want to say a word of uh, acknowledgement uh, to their families. Uh, my thoughts and prayers and our thoughts and prayers go out to them and their families in this difficult time. I know the fishing industry and occupation is a difficult one and can be dangerous, and I wanted to, uh, I wanted to mention that. Well, I know that we all, we all very much appreciate that, uh, Mayor Warren. Uh, it's, it's a very tough business. Those guys, uh, men and women involved in that business, know it, uh, but they go out every day, and if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have the fresh seafood we have. But it's very sad, particularly uh, this time of year. So I know the families, uh, and I know my audience appreciates you, you saying that. Um, just uh, want to cover a couple of things. I know you were here recently um, for a program of, or to, to, to discuss adoption, the, 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 what goes on with adopting children. Uh, that You did a, an event here in New Bedford. Jeez, it may have been a couple of months ago now, truthfully, yeah. Mayor. But uh, talk to us a little bit about what, what that means to you, uh, uh, children and adoptions. Well, you know, I did do a roundtable in New Bedford um, regarding uh, children and the public advocates that uh, work with uh, those children and families uh, that do not have homeless, uh, that live in group homes. The concern I have at this moment is that the program uh, and for uh, those advocates is underfunded, and it's continually underfunded. It has been. Uh, these are folks on the front lines ensuring that the safety and welfare, not just the legal aspect uh, for, for uh, uh, the children and some of the parents are protected, but they're, that their uh, livelihood and welfare um, are protected. And uh, the concern I have, again, uh, we've got a, a situation with this governor uh, who continues to play games and gimmicks with the budget, to keep it afloat, there are real results to those games and gimmicks. We, you know, we have a structural deficit every year. We're not taking in enough revenue to pay for what we're doing now, um, and we're not transparent. And the, there are real live results um, for these games and gimmicks. Charlie Baker is playing with the budget to keep it afloat and not uh, making sure that we are uh, providing the funding for the public advocates for some of the most vulnerable uh, children in our state. So that's why uh, I want to come down uh, wanted to make sure I was there, so I heard firsthand from uh, foster parents and um, also the advocates that protect uh, children that do not have homes. We're speaking with Newton Mayor Seti Warren, who's running for the governor of Massachusetts on the Demo He's running for the Democrat nomination to then face ultimately Charlie Baker, we, we believe, uh, on the Republican side. Although I think he's drawn an opponent now uh, as well. Now, M Mayor. Uh, Mayor Warren, I, I'm holding a piece of paper in my hand here that you you have uh, you've interjected uh, in, in giving your opinion on this gatehouse media takeover of the Boston Herald, and what what you think they're going to do with the unions uh, there. Can, can you talk a little bit about that? We have a lot of gatehouse newspapers down here in this area. Yeah. So I my view on this is you know we need to allow for the protection of uh, workers' rights, uh, the ability to. Uh, negotiate their benefits. I called uh, on Gatehouse News to do that uh, for their employees. I think it's incredibly important at this moment when I believe the issue of our time is economic inequality uh, for corporate uh, entity that's come in uh, to ensure that their employees uh, have a level playing field, they're able to take care of themselves and their families. So I think it's I think it's incredibly important for Gatehouse News to uh, to listen to their employees and, uh, and and provide that platform for them. Well, yeah, I appreciate that. I think that uh, 
we're a better we're a better state if we have a two newspaper na- uh, you know city uh, statewide uh, organization. No question. Yeah, no no question. no question about that. So, Mayor Warren, Mayor Warren, for those people who don't know you, give us a thumb. You've been here with us before, but give people a thumbnail sketch of, of who you are, your, your military background, what you've done, and, and what you're hoping to do if you become governor. Sure. Well, thank you, Chris, for that. I, you know, there are three things that really drove me into this race, and I do have to do with my background. Um, as you mentioned, um, I've been in the military uh, nine years. I enlisted a little bit after 9-11 because my dad was in the military, a Korean War vet. My grandfather was a World War II vet, uh, Battle Bulge. Uh, second, you know, I'm a mayor. been mayor of my hometown, 11th, 11th uh, largest city in the state, working for the 88,000 people in my hometown every single day. And, and third, uh, my family. You know, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I've got two kids, nine and six. And I got into this race because of the issue of economic inequality in, that, in, in our state. People and communities are falling behind, um, and it's not right. Uh, we've got to make sure we're making investments uh, that level the playing field. I had a real opportunity uh, myself. Uh, my dad uses GI Bill benefits from the Korean War uh, to purchase the home uh, where I uh, grew up here in Newton, grew up with my two sisters where I live today with my wife um, and two children. And um, the idea that you can uh, have that opportunity, like my dad did, who grew up in a poor neighborhood in New York, um, and ensure their, your kids or their kids can do better than they did, is not happening in our state today. And that's when I, when I think about economic inequality and I think about this divide that's growing. Uh, this is why I got into the race. And we do not have a governor. We do not have uh, state budgets that reflect uh, the, the need or policies, the need uh, that is there in our state. And I've been to over 140 communities across the Commonwealth, and you know, we've got to deal with the, with the cost of health care and putting in place a system that is equitable, uh, single payer, that's equitable and affordable. We've got to make sure we deal with uh, housing and transportation. You know, I've been, Chris, you and I have talked about South Coast Rail um, and the need for that and housing as well. Uh, we've got to make sure we have an education system where people can attain the credentials they need to make ends meet in this economy. I propose free public college with uh, internships and apprenticeships included. That's lifelong, so people can go back. Um, and uh, I also believe in creating, in creating uh, higher-paying jobs where people live. I, you know, one of the things I talked to Mayor Mitchell about is, you know, growing the offshore wind industry and speeding that up uh, so that we can. Uh, ensure that we're, we're giving people a chance to make a living in our state, particularly in New Bedford as well. There's real opportunity there. So that's why I got into the race, um, and uh, I believe strongly that uh, we can do better, that the status quo isn't enough. Uh, so that's uh, that, that's that's where I'm at. <laughs> well, you know, th- thank you very much. We're speaking with Seti Warren, who's uh, running – he's the mayor of Newton currently. He's running for uh, – for to be the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a Democrat. Uh, mayor, what well, – Talk to me a little bit about the opioid crisis and what you'd like to do, what you think you can do, maybe what they're not doing now. It's very, very important. Well, I appreciate that question, uh, Chris. You know, one of the things uh, that I saw in Newton uh, as mayor over the last few years is a rise in overdoses um, around opioids. Um, And then when I announced for governor, I started moving around the Commonwealth. Um, I was hearing from people, every city and town I went to and setting, uh, there was not ever a time where someone didn't raise their hand and say, what are you going to do about the opioid crisis? Because my friend, my neighbor, my mm-hmm. family member um, is living with, with opioid addiction. And then I looked at the data, Chris, and it is astounding what I found. Um, since 2014, when Governor Patrick declared a state of emergency, Massachusetts was the first state that declared a state of emergency around opioid addiction. 6,000 people have died of opioid addiction. Every day in the state of Massachusetts, over five people die a day of opioid addiction. We have 250,000 people in our state that are living with opioid addiction. Uh, Setting aside the human cost of this, the state of Massachusetts is is dealing uh, with this crisis at a cost of $10 billion a year. Amazing. Uh, So I appreciate the efforts that have been made on Beacon Hill to provide Narcan uh, to people and prevent, uh, you know, over-prescribing uh, some of these drugs, 
but it is not enough. The status quo is not enough. Um, and I feel very strongly that we've got to shine a light on this. We've got to take the stigma away. This is why I started a series of conversations, town halls, and roundtables. I've been uh, to uh, the Cape. I had a town hall down in the Cape. Just had a town hall in Springfield recently. I had a roundtable in Brockton and Amherst. And uh, I'll be coming to New Bedford uh, in January uh, for the same purpose. Okay. We have got to provide additional resources to uh, ensure that we're not only uh, addressing prevention and education, but we're treating. We, we don't have enough uh, you know, uh, detox beds. Uh, and for the long term, we do not have community-based long-term uh, treatment for people uh, with wraparound services. It's got to be done. Um, it is not something that can we, we should be waiting for, and the governor is not doing enough. Uh, and I believe we, we have to address this, and it's, it's important. No, I, I, I really appreciate that. I've, I've long thought that you, you, if you talk to anybody who's been through this or usually you end up talking with family members, you point out, you don't really talk to the person because they're dead oftentimes, unfortunately. Right. Uh, there's really, unless you come, unless you have a lot of money yep. uh, or you have happen to be married to or have a parent and you're still under their health care who has a very good insurance, you have no ability to get, get treatment. I, that's exactly true, Chris. Look, even those, um, and I'm listening to people, you know, in all these settings, even those folks with wealth um, are telling me that there's just not enough treatment. There are weights right. uh, to even get into short-term recovery and long-term recovery um, care. Uh, people are sending their loved ones out of state mm -hmm. because even those with wealth. I mean, I, I'm talking to people who have the resources. So in addition to uh, this economic injustice and inequality, which I, the reason why I got in this race, to your point, uh, think about it if you don't have any resources. You can't send your right. loved one or, you know, to Florida or to different states that have availability. You're exactly right. Most average people do not have that here in the state. Everyday average people, uh, this is a crisis, and we've got to shine a light on it. The status quo is enough. I was very concerned uh, a few weeks ago when Governor Baker put out a press release stating that we had a decline of, of deaths, 10%, in the first nine months of the year. Well, when you look under that statistic, it, what, he's, what it really translates into, instead of 5.8 people dying a day, 5.4 people are dying a oh, day. God. That's just cruel. Right. In addition to this, and there's no reason to point that as progress. The second piece of his press release, he talked about moving money around. He's on this panel, um, President Trump's opioid panel, um, President Trump declared a state of emergency but didn't provide the resources. Um, and, and, and Charlie Baker's doing the same thing. He's talking about moving uh, some dollars around from a federal Medicaid waiver to address a $10 billion crisis. It's just wrong. Uh, we have got to act, and we've got to act now, and we've got to provide the resources. We're, we're speaking with Seti Warren, who's currently the mayor of Newton. Uh, he's he's decided not to run again, uh, but he's running for the governor of Massachusetts. Now, uh, Mayor Warren, the, the policies are great, but you've got to get there. Uh, if someone is interested in learning more about you, perhaps get involved in your campaign, do you have on hand your website, how they can yes, reach you? Yes, uh, setiwarren.com, S-E-T-T-I-W-A-R-R-E-N.com. Uh, we would love, I'd love to earn the support of everyone that is listening. So please, uh, you know, please uh, dial in that website and you know, one of the things, Chris, we'll let you know when the uh, uh, Topia Town Hall will be in January. Thank you. Uh, look out for that on our website, and we'll provide that date to you. I don't, we don't have a date yet, but we will soon. Uh, but, but I would invite people to stay tuned. I'll be in the Med Bedford area well before there, before then as well for uh, other types of events. But that town hall is something that I'd really like to hear from people. And one of the reasons why I started that town hall, Chris, those these conversations was not just to shine a light, shine a light on this and destigmatize, but also to hear what is happening in communities and hear the best ideas for solutions. You know, one of the things that I'm learning um, along the way is that um, we do have people that have ideas on how to address this, and we can't leave any any ideas off the table. We've got to, you know, incorporate uh, those. So one of the reasons why I'm doing this is I'm collecting information so that uh, not only do, you know, 
know, do we need to provide the resources, but we need some new innovative solutions that may not be present. It's, it's not just about resources. So I, I really would invite people, uh, people that are living with addiction and recovery, people that are clinicians, uh, to join us in that conversation in New Bedford in January. Hey, thank you very much again. We're speaking with Seti Warren. Now, you were down here a little while ago for the mayor's conference that John Mitchell hosted for the, uh, I guess it's the National Mayor's uh, Conference, where they crafted what's called the New Bedford Principles. It has a lot of things in it about environmental, uh, clean energy, things of that nature, but also some stuff on the taxes, keeping local taxes deductible, uh, income tax as well as property tax. I think also bonds were part of that as well, municipal bonds, which we've now seen is the opposite of what the Trump plan or the Republican plan in Congress is going to do. Uh, any any thoughts on that, Mayor? Well, I think um, that this is this bill is so destructive uh, that is is moving around in Congress that President Trump supports. It's destructive for cities and towns, it's destructive for individuals. Even more why, at this moment, we need to have a governor that is making these the decisions that I'm talking about to protect our residents around health care, around transportation and housing, making investments, around leveling the playing field for people. There could be a real impact that, that, we're, that we don't know about, but we know uh, we don't know the extent of it, but we know it will be negative for our residents. So we, we cannot have um, a governor that embraces this idea that we shouldn't be making investments or cutting. You know, Governor Baker has cut transportation in the state in the last year's budget. He's cut opioid addiction funding for Plymouth, uh, uh, treatment funding for Plymouth County. He's uh, cut uh, housing uh, subsidies for, for affordability. Uh, this is not the direction we need to be going in at this moment, not having uh, a governor that is making cuts but making investments to level the playing field, particularly with this bill uh, that is that is moving uh, towards the president's desk. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I know I've kept you a little longer than I, than I, than I told uh, Kevin I was going to keep you. Not a problem. <laughs> but but uh, just one more time, uh, Mayor, if you could give us your website for people who want to follow up. Absolutely. SetiWarren.com, S-E-T-T-I, Warren, W-A-R-R-E-N.com. You and your family have a wonderful holiday. You too. Take care, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Thanks so much. That was um, Newton Mayor Seti Warren, Democrat candidate for governor. He's running with uh, Jay Gonzalez, who we've had on the show. He's running in that race as well. There's also another guy who's running whose father, uh, Massey is his name. Father is the author, Robert K. Massey. Written a lot of books on Russia. He's a Democrat. Why wouldn't he write books on Russia? Oh, I'm kidding. Uh, but no, we appreciate when, that the uh, that the mayor took some time here on a Sunday morning to give us a give us a call. And, and of course, naturally, I told him it would be a lot shorter than it was. But um, it's important stuff, folks. Important stuff. This governor's race. I don't like it when it's a fait accompli. You know, the media is saying, "Look, I I'm a Republican, but it doesn't matter. It's important that um, we have real debates on issues." As he was pointing out in the opioid crisis, and it's, it's across the board, nobody has all the answers. Nobody has all the answers. For instance, I don't understand why we're not taking more law enforcement money and putting it into treatment. You need, I mean, the only, we've got to put the drug dealers in jail for a real long time. Take the addicts and put them in the hospital, perhaps for a real long time. Um, I know we've got some civil rights issues there. But we've got to we've got to start addressing these problems. So that's interesting. Seti Warren will be having an opioid task force meeting here. Uh, uh, almost listen. That's like listening to the downline consumer, right? So, folks, stick around. We'll have uh, more of that when, when that is announced in January. We'll we'll get the date. We'll get that time for you, so that you, you can attend that if you've got some some ideas and something to offer. We'll do this. So we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. I'm Chris McCarthy. This is Sunday brunch. You can call at five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred.